Hey, what's up? And welcome to Hack My Growth. In this video, we're going to be discussing five KPI best practices that will help us measure what matters most. Are you looking to grow your business, but you're not sure where to start? That's where we come in. Thanks for checking out this video. If this is the first time you're watching or maybe you've been watching a while and have not yet subscribed to the channel, please do so now. And don't forget to turn on alerts. We create new content each and every week to help you get the most out of your marketing activities. So today we're going to be going over five best practice for developing KPIs. And besides SEO, data and analytics is one of the things that I'm extremely passionate about. And I love to dig in and, and help businesses and small business owners and entrepreneurs figure out how to leverage to really grow their businesses. And KPIs are extremely important. So let's talk a little bit about what they are, and then we're going to go into five best practices for creating KPIs that will help us measure the things that matter. So what is a KPI? A KPI stands for Key Performance Indicators. So these are key metrics. These are data points that are, that are essential to the business. They help us determine whether or not we're headed in the right direction. That's what a KPI is for. It's really like a compass for our business. And if we want to know that we're going in the right direction, we have to have measurements. We have to be able to track this stuff in order to know if what we're doing is working or not. Uh, otherwise, we're kind of going into things blindly. So another thing to really understand is KPIs are not universal. What may be a key performance indicator for one business may matter very little to another. And a lot of times I've done this myself, right? We're trying to kind of find the best way to move forward. We're trying to find the best way to do something. And so we, we Google, we search it and we, we look, okay, what are the top KPIs for, for marketing agency, the top KPIs for a restaurant, top KPIs for a software company uh, to kind of give us ideas. But just because it's a key performance indicator for one business doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work that way for you. You need to be able to define KPIs that are specific for your business and that are really catered to what you're trying to achieve overall. So let's get into five of those best practices. And number one is choose KPIs that are aligned with your business objective. This means knowing where you want to go first, right? You have to understand where you're headed. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to align KPIs into that direction. So here's some tips for aligning your KPIs. You want to select different KPIs for different levels of management. Now, not all businesses may have this, but again, executives are interested in different things than a day-to-day -day manager is, is, is really looking for. So you've got to understand who these KPIs are for, uh, making sure that you select the right ones for the different level of management. And they also need to inform both top down, so you know the executives down, and also bottom up, so the people doing the work day in and day out to know if they're headed in the right direction. It's extremely important that you you kind of you look at both sides of the coin here. And again, like I said before, is you want to avoid cookie cutter KPIs. Don't measure something just because somebody else is. If it's really not key to your business, you should not be focusing on it. Make sure you only focus on the things that, that actually drive value and that are aligned and attached to the overall success or failure of your company. So number two is make sure your KPIs are attainable. We live in a world where we see people who are overnight successes, and I'm, I'm doing air quotes right now when I say that because the reality is is most of these overnight successes, like you've heard this line probably before, took years and years and years and years to to gain uh, their status. And you know what what happens is we see these big companies and they do you know like these you know, moonshots or they do these. Um, you know, hard reaching KPIs, you know, where they're, they're kind of just going out there and doing what we call a stretch goal, right? Well, stretch goals are great because they do stretch us, but stretch goals should not be part of your KPIs. Um, key performance indicators, again, they're, they're associated with your business goals. So these are things you want to make sure that you can actually achieve and make sure that your business is headed in the right direction and, and making sure that, you know, you're going to have some momentum because when you put these goals out here and they're, let's say they're not attainable and you keep failing, that really like that stinks, right? And that drives down morale, and the people on your team are frustrated. You get frustrated, and, and it really kind of drives you off course. But if your KPIs are attainable and you're able to hit them, and again, you shouldn't make them super weak, but that you can hit them, it's going to start to build some momentum for your business. So, some questions to ask when developing these KPIs, or what data points do we need to measure? Where are you going to get this information so you know that that it's attainable? Uh, what technologies and processes do we need to implement? 
to access them on a regular basis because you want to be able to see them. You want to be able to know uh, if you're headed, again, in that right direction. What technologies or process do we need to surface KPIs to relevant stakeholders? Um, does the executive suite need a dashboard or some sort of reporting tool that's going to allow them to see uh, if we're hitting those KPIs? And how much will this cost and what are the potential returns? Again, your, your KPIs have to be tested. Your business goals they need to be achievable and they need to provide some ROI in that, right? They need to be able to uh, help make sure that the business is going in the right direction and that there's a return on your investment in time and energy. Number three, make sure you have accurate KPIs. You don't want to just pull things out of thin air. You don't want to just make up numbers. Uh, you also want to make sure you have clean data so that you know uh, th that you're headed in the right direction. Again, some questions to ask here. Do KPIs include all relevant information? So let's say you're looking at your customer lifetime value. Uh, well, you may have some customer information in your marketing tools and maybe some in your CRM and your sales tools. You may have some in old uh, Excel formatted files. And in order to really understand, you're going to need access to all three sources of information. And without that, your KPIs are going to be incorrect if you're only reporting off of one tool or one database when really your customer information is spread out across many different sources. Uh, again, how accurate is the KPI in reflecting into biz the, your, your business performance? If you're not pulling from the right sources, if you don't have all the information, then they're not necessarily going to be reflecting the true performance of your business, and they're not going to help you predict or forecast forward. A lot of times, you know, we get into a tool that has a, a great reporting element to it. And that doesn't mean that tool's wrong. That tool's giving you some really good uh, reports and dashboards based on its own setup. Um, like, you know, uh, HubSpot's got great, great dashboarding tools, but let's say you're not using their CRM, maybe you're using Salesforce. Unless you sync both of those data sources together and you begin to aggregate your, your customer data and your sales data across both platforms, you're not going to get a full picture and it's not gonna reflect the truth um, so to speak, of what the business is going after. So this is important questions to ask when you're looking at the accuracy of your data. It can seem overwhelming, uh, especially for a lot of businesses who are still running off spreadsheets and things of that nature. Uh, but even if you're doing spreadsheets, you know, you may have more than one. You, you need to have some sort of master spreadsheet where you're pulling in all the sources together to when you run your reports and you run your analysis, that you're getting uh, the actual answers to your questions and you're not just getting partial answers because you're only using parts of your data. Number four, select KPIs that are actionable. So we want to have good KPIs in a sense that you know they're attainable, that they're based on our business, that they're accurate. We also want to make sure that they can take action from these, you know, make sure that you can move forward. Questions, did, did you learn? Are you learning anything from these KPIs? Uh, and then what actions can you take based on what you've learned? Are these going to help you make better business decisions or are they going to make you feel good? Uh, a feel good KPI is something I would call a vanity metric. An actionable metric is something that helps you learn, but it also helps you grow. It helps me steer the ship in the right direction. And the lastly, you want to limit the number of your KPIs and really want to limit them to five to seven. A lot of times I'll see dashboards and dashboards are great, um, but they have like seven to 10 to 15 different metrics on them. The problem with those is you have too much information and you get kind of what we like to say analysis paralysis. When you have too much to focus on, your default is to just kind of ignore it. That's just the way the human brain works. We can't focus on more than one thing at a time. Uh, when it comes to KPIs, when we have too many of them, it really stretches what our brain can handle and it doesn't allow us to attain the knowledge that we need from the data that we have. So like we were talking about limiting your KPIs, you want to limit the selection of your KPIs and, and really think long and hard about what's key to your business. These are the metrics that truly matter to your success. And if you have too many of them, you're going to be all over the place and you're not going to be focused on the true growth goal, right? You're not going to have a single point of truth, a single point of action that the business is headed to. You're going to be kind of going off in a number of different areas. So that's why keeping them focused is really important. Um, again, the fewer you have, the easier it is to stay focused on them. Just, just kind of that point we were making, right? And then one thing is, is we have actionable KPIs, we're going to be optimizing around. And if you have too many of them, it can be extremely costly because it's going to take you more time and effort to make sure that they're up to, to snuff, that they're continuing being tweaked and headed in the right direction. So when you have too many things to focus on, again, you're just adding more work that you're not really going to see a return on investment from. 
So just wrapping this up, KPI best practices, here's the top five that I would really highly recommend that all business owners focus on. Choose KPIs that align with your business objectives. Make sure that you have KPIs that are attainable. Make sure that you have accurate data for your KPIs. Select KPIs that are actionable and limit the number of KPIs to five to seven. Uh, I pulled some of this information from a great article on Clipfolio, as you can see the sources here. And we also have another one on our blog at smbmarketing.net forward slash blog. If you have any questions, please comment below. We'd love to continue the conversation with you. Until next time, happy marketing. Thank you.